Methyl bromide is a colorless gas at room temperature, whereas at or below 38.5 degrees Fahrenheit, it is a liquid. It's also a liquid when compressed. It is usually transported in its liquefied compressed state. As a gas, methyl bromide is odorless and non-irritating at low concentrations. At high concentrations, greater than a thousand parts per million, it has a musty or fruity odor. Because methyl bromide lacks adequate physiologic warning properties, up to 2% chloropicrin, a lacrimator, is often added as a warning indicator of its presence. Methyl bromide is a fumigant used for pre-planting and soil preparation. Because of concerns about its adverse effects on the ozone layer, methyl bromide was banned under the Montreal Protocol. Most exposures occur by inhalation and by absorption through skin. Methyl bromide is three times heavier than air and can accumulate in poorly ventilated or low-lying areas. Under adverse conditions, it may remain in the air for days after application as a fumigant. The state of California was granted a critical use exemption for its use in strawberry cultivation and other agricultural commodities. Fatalities have occurred amongst pesticide appliers, as well as occupants who were exposed during an application and occupants who prematurely re-entered. Children exposed to the same levels of methyl bromide as adults may receive a larger dose because they have a greater lung surface area to body weight ratio. In addition, they may be exposed to higher levels than adults in the same location because of their short stature and the higher levels of methyl bromide that are found nearer to the ground. Methyl bromide gas easily penetrates most protective clothing and it easily penetrates skin. Because it is a gas at room temperature, the ingestion of methyl bromide is highly unlikely. Methyl bromide is used primarily as a pesticide to fumigate soil, spaces, structures, and commodities. It is also used as a methylating agent, a low boiling solvent, an oil extractant, and in various chemical syntheses. The EPA Office of Pesticide Programs considers acute inhalation exposure to methyl bromide for one day to be of concern at levels greater than or equal to 0.33 parts per million over a 24-hour time-weighted average in the non-occupational setting. In the occupational setting, the EPA has set the limit of less than or equal to one part per million for an eight-hour time-weighted average. The health effects of methyl bromide are worrisome. It is a neurotoxic gas that can cause convulsions, coma, and long-term neuromuscular and cognitive deficits. Inhalation exposure to high concentrations of methyl bromide may cause inflammation of the bronchi and an accumulation of fluid in the lung, as well as irritation to the eyes and nose. Skin contact with high vapor concentrations or with liquid methyl bromide can cause systemic toxicity and may cause painful dermatitis and blisters. In sublethal poisoning, a latency period of 2 to 48 hours can occur between exposure and the onset of symptoms. Symptoms such as headache, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, malaise, and visual disturbances develop. Involuntary movements of the eyes, dilated pupils, slurred speech, trembling of the extremities during movement, an impaired gait, impaired sensation to touch, motor deficits, cerebellar abnormalities, and decreased reflexes. Neuropsychiatric abnormalities often occur after acute exposure, however it may be delayed from days to weeks. For some, severe and prolonged seizures may occur. Sadly, peripheral neuropathy and motor and cognitive deficits may persist indefinitely. Respiratory symptoms include throat irritation, chest pain, and shortness of breath. Severe exposures may cause inflammation of the bronchi or lungs and an accumulation of fluid in the lungs, which may be delayed 24 hours or longer after exposure. Death may result from respiratory or cardiovascular failure. Exposure may also lead to what's called reactive airway dysfunction syndrome, a chemically or irritant-induced type of asthma. Accumulation of high concentrations of methyl bromide can cause the heart to have a rapid and ineffective contractions. Adverse effects on the skin can occur with either liquid or high vapor concentrations. The sequela includes stinging pain, redness of the skin, and blisters characteristic of second degree burns. The effect on the kidneys includes proteinuria, hematuria, scant urine production, and increased nitrogen waste in the blood. Fortunately, the renal damage is reversible. Regarding the liver, acute exposure to methyl bromide causes elevated liver enzymes in the serum and jaundice. Ocular effects include corneal irritation and burns. Chronic exposures have been associated with peripheral neuropathies, especially sensory neuropathies impaired gait, 
behavioral changes, and mild liver and kidney dysfunction. Visual impairment secondary to atrophy of the optic nerve has also been reported. Currently, there is insufficient data to show that methylbromide is a considerable reproductive or developmental toxicant. Some animal studies have shown decreased fetal body weights and fetal malformations after inhalation exposure. In 2013, an epidemiology study out of California of 442 pregnant women found a relationship between residential proximity to methylbromide during the second trimester of pregnancy and restricted fetal growth. This study on its own is not enough to make a conclusion. The International Agency for Research on Cancer has determined that methyl bromide is not classified as carcinogenic to humans. After an acute exposure, it is important to focus on circulation, the airway, and breathing. For a patient with respiratory complaints, administer supplemental oxygen. For bronchospasm, consider the health of the myocardium before selecting a bronchodilator. Observe patients for 24 hours and repeat chest examinations and other diagnostic tests as needed at regular intervals. Burns and blisters may be managed in the same manner as thermal burns. For the eyes, irrigate for at least 15 minutes, then test visual acuity. Examine the eyes for corneal damage and treat appropriately. Significant corneal injuries should be referred to an ophthalmologist. There is currently no proven antidote for methyl bromide poisoning. Dimercaprol and acetylcysteine have been used, but are not recommended for routine use since evidence is lacking. Serum bromide ion levels can be used to document that the exposure did in fact occur. However, bromide levels do not accurately represent or predict the clinical course. A bromide level of less than 1.5 milligrams per deciliter is considered normal. Routine laboratory studies include CBC, serum glucose and electrolytes, a renal panel, and liver function tests. In cases of inhalation exposure, chest radiographs, pulse oximetry, or ABG measurements may be helpful. Electroencephalography may show frontal predominant slow waves or polyspikes with following slow waves. MRI may reveal characteristic involvement in the dentate nucleus of the cerebellum, brainstem, and the splenium of the corpus callosum. Because the onset of pulmonary edema may be delayed for up to several days, patients who have severe exposure should be monitored with serial examinations before the absence of toxic effects can be assured. If pulmonary edema is suspected, admit the patient to the intensive care unit. Neurological symptoms may not develop for several days or weeks. Weeks. Patients who have no evidence of neuropsychiatric or pulmonary effects for 24 hours after exposure may be discharged with the instruction to return to the emergency department should symptoms develop or recur. Currently, the use of methyl bromide is restricted to specific settings as required by U.S. law and international regulations. Methyl bromide is a highly toxic pesticide which has been banned in the United States for the use in homes and other residential settings. Do you keep in mind that the systemic surveillance of methyl bromide toxicity does not occur on a national level. The health department should be notified if you have a patient who presents with toxic effects due to exposure to methyl bromide. Your local health department should be notified. Examples of districts that are at risk include District 7, District 9, District 11, Worker safety advised.